what is it that is exactly happening at the moment of death? Though it doesn't need any expertise to die, but there is a whole lot of science as to how to die. Life comes in that way, goes out that way. If you are here just as life, that's the nature of life. That's the way life is. Whether you are ready or not, you will die when it comes. It doesn't take any expertise. Many aspects of life demand expertise. Death is not like that. If I shoot you in the head, you'll die even if you don't know anything about it. Perfectly well, <laughs> isn't it? That's the beauty of death. Life is not like that. Whatever you do, you'll always look back and say, Oh, I could have done it better. Isn't it? Isn't it so? Life is not like that. But death is the… this is the advantage with it. <laughs> You don't have to have any knowledge about it. You can die perfectly well. Now, what is it that is exactly happening at the moment of death? Either your life can be shocked out of your body, boom, it's shocked out of your body because the body became suddenly unable to contain life, it spilled out. or it can be squeezed out of the body or it can be tortured out of the body. Now you drank yourself to a state where your liver is in tatters. Now life still wants to be there but body is squeezing life out, it's torturing it out. It becomes… you will see people go into disease and People beg, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. Then the time comes when it becomes unbearable, then they say, I want to die. Have you seen this happening? Because now the body has become such a torture, you are seeking death as a relief, not as a transcendence, it's just a relief. When body… when life process becomes extremely painful, people will seek death because they see it as a relief. They are not seeing it as a possibility, they are just seeing it as a relief. So death, though it doesn't need any expertise to die, but there is a whole lot of science as to how to die. To make use of that event in the best possible way, there is a whole lot of systems, I think, Quite some time ago I said, after… from the date I leave, whatever the date, even if I leave tomorrow morning, what's the problem? Because uh, I promised that after this for eighty years, people will feel my presence strongly. That is, I will ensure that all of you are dead before I am done <laughs> So if you maintain that if you just maintain that connection, if you hold on, you will die well. I don't know whether you live well or not, that takes some skill. So life is something everybody has to pay attention to. Death, for you I would take care but you are asking the question in general. So, how should one live with the same ease with which you exhale? Actually, whenever you feel little uptight within yourself, Whenever you feel little trapped within yourself, you always sigh, isn't it? That is okay if you live like that. If you simply live like this, most wonderful. But if you live with a little sigh, still okay. But if it has to be punched out of you or squeezed out of you, that is not good. Life should depart gently. It… it settled into the womb like a snowflake without any effort. Many of you have been pregnant, there's still somebody here? Yeah. One day after you conceived, one day suddenly something boom came into you, nothing like that happened. It settled into you, another life settled into you without even you being conscious about it. With such gentleness it settled in. 
even a snowflake you would feel, it is much, much subtler than that. Like a gentle breeze, it walked in. Like a gentle breeze, it should walk out. Because that's how life is. Rest of the nonsense is created by you. Life comes in that way, goes out that way. If you are here, just as life. If you have become the nonsense that you have gathered, the dirt bag that you are, it's not my terminology, this is the local terminology, they call you a dirt bag because this is just earth. So the piece of earth that you gathered, you started having nonsensical ideas about it. Because of that, living is such a struggle. Otherwise, like a gentle breeze it came in, like a gentle breeze it should live, like a gentle breeze it should go. That's the way… that's the nature of life. That's the way life is. You might have made yourself into something else, that's different. People have made themselves into such a struggle. So death should happen like gentle breeze, like a gentle note out of a flute. Ooh, you must go. It'll be wonderful that you left in a song. But don't focus on death. It is only the reminder of your mortality which makes the small time span of life very precious, isn't it? If you were immortal, you wouldn't do anything right, I'm telling you. Yes? If you were immortal, you wouldn't do anything right. Now, because time is ticking, you know, you're, you're going. Just as you're doing this, you're going, do you know? Yes or no? Because it's ticking away, if you become aware, suddenly life becomes precious and valuable, not a moment to be missed. If you get into a certain rhythm which is compulsive within you, you will be just a repetition of the past. If you want to break your emotional rhythms, these are simplest tools, maybe drastic, but if you don't want to waste time in your life, that's the way to go. When it comes to the innermost core, it is uh, all one. When it comes to the body, when it comes to the mind, when it comes to your emotions and the world around you and your activity, the whole significance of life, the beauty of life and the efficacy of life is in just finding the right rhythm. What is your rhythm? If you listen to the outermost surface of who you are, there will be one kind of rhythm. If you delve a little deeper, there will be another kind of rhythm. There is a very surface uh, rhythm which will find expression in very fundamental needs and compulsions of who you are. If you watch yourself a little more closely, you will see there is a psychological rhythm which need not necessarily match with the needs and compulsions which drive you on a daily basis. If you watch with little more sensitivity, you would notice an emotional rhythm which is of a completely different nature than your psychological rhythm. If you much… watch much more keenly, 
you may notice a certain chemical rhythm which could be more connected to our emotional cycles than anything else. If you watch with much more awareness, you may notice a certain energy rhythm which will not have anything to do with any of these things but it causes everything else. But if you look deep enough, there is no rhythm, it's utter stillness. There is nothing to do about one stillness, just to take a dip is all you can do. But all the other realms need to be worked at. Your energies, your chemistry, your emotion, your thought, your body, your desire, and the karmic rhythms, these things need to be worked at. Otherwise, you will be just a repetition of the past. If you get into a certain rhythm which is compulsive within you, you will be just a repetition of the past over and over again. Nothing new will ever touch you. So to find the rhythm and consciously to change the rhythm, to make the rhythm more profound, more complex or more simple. Above all, to be able to consciously change the rhythm, not to be like a broken record that you go on singing the same rhythm all the time, all the time, all the time. At the age of sixty, somebody comes to me yesterday and says, my husband is not paying enough attention to me. I said, you must be glad <laughs> you, you had these prayer problems when you were eighteen. Not good but understandable. At sixty, you still have the same problem. At sixty, if you are still a teenager, oh, nobody is going to tolerate you. <laughs> yes? Nobody is going to tolerate a sixty-year-old behaving like a teenager, isn't it? <laughs> so, if you do not learn to consciously change the rhythm of body, mind, emotion, chemistry and energy, you will become like a broken record, simply repeating the same things over and over again. The easiest way or the simplest way to break the rhythms which are compulsive within you is to start doing things that you don't like. You would like to start the morning with a chocolate, but here you start with a neem ball. <laughs> Just what you don't like. If you want to break your emotional rhythms, the simplest thing is to look for somebody that you cannot stand and to work with them. Choose them as your partner to work with, somebody you just can't stand. These are simplest tools, maybe drastic, but if you don't want to waste time in your life, that's the way to go, to just get up in the morning and do what you don't like. And after some time you will see, your likes and dislikes are essentially your making. They are not some God-given laws as to what you should like and what you should dislike. It's got nothing to do with the object of your like or, or the object of your dislike. It is just your compulsiveness which draws you to certain things and repels you from certain other things. Thank you for joining us. Please share your observations on this subject in the comments, subscribe to continue our journey together and invite others to join this path. See you soon.